Welcome to Medical Sales Live, the number one resource for breaking into medical sales and building your career. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is John Akers. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for the Medical Sales College, and welcome to another edition of Medical Sales Live. Today, we have Tracy Haynes, uh, who is a graduate from the Medical Sales College, as our special guest today. Welcome, Tracy. It's great to see you, my man. Hey, John. It's great to see you. I'm so happy to be on. Thank you. Hey, we, we're really honored to have you on here today, Tracy. And I know we had the pleasure of catching up on the phone here a few weeks ago, and um, I had a chance to hear your story. I'd love for you to kind of share with the audience here what you were doing prior to uh, the, the Medical Sales College, um, kind of a little bit about where, you, where, where you're from and, uh, and your background leading up to this decision to attend. So I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I come from humble beginnings. And, uh, you know, all my life, I kind of been an account manager, you know, at a very young age, my brother uh, and myself at, you know, nine and 10 years old, we, we used to uh, cut grass for people in the neighborhood. And we and it was kind of like managing an account. So uh, we did that up until for a very long time, up until I went to foster care at the age of 12 years old. And, you know, when I got in foster care, I kind of transitioned from home you know, all these different homes and all these different uh, foster homes and group homes and until I came across a, a pretty good family. Uh, at the age of 18, uh, I barely graduated high school. So I had to figure something out. I went into the military and I spent four years active duty being stationed at Fort Stewart, Georgia. My job there was a, a logistical specialist as well as an armorer. So I, I would fix and repair the weapons. Uh, and I really enjoyed my time in the military. I deployed um, a couple times, but I knew that wasn't what I wanted to do with my life. I was grateful to serve, but I knew that wasn't what I wanted to do with my life. So I transitioned out of the military and I went to, um, you know, play a little college football and just just try to figure things out. And well, where'd you play? You got to share that with us. Tell us where well, you play. Okay. So. Well, I played at, at UAB, and um, you know it, it. It wasn't really. It just wasn't really fulfilling. And then I was back in Birmingham, where I was from, so where a lot of the turmoil had kind of I had experienced as a, as a child. It, it just wasn't really, uh, I would say, fitting for me. So I transitioned to uh, Tallahassee Community College, where I, I enrolled in a, a finance program and got my associates. And then I transferred to FAMU, where I got my bachelor's degree in psychology. So after transferring to FAMU, I ended up uh, moving to Houston uh, with my wife, where she accepted a, a job as an RN in Houston. And that's and 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 I were also worked at, at the county as a researcher and just just doing a lot of different jobs. So I was really trying, I was really trying to find myself. <laughs> So. You, you know, as you tell that story, Tracy, there, there's several things that really permeate um, my, my soul when I hear that. Number one is, is there's a hustle factor, right? Um, yes, you talk about, you know, being an account manager and, and how even at a young age you were you were cutting lawns and, and you were really trying to hustle to, to, to get by and to make it. The, the, the other thing is, is that <clears throat> you've always had a vision. It's clear in your story, you know, when you talk about, you know, from going to the military to, you know, playing ball at UAB and then going down to Tallahassee and, and, and getting a job and working and so forth, you, you've had this vision of success and, and career growth all along. Whether that was intentional or, or unintentional, you, you have certainly had that and displayed that. I mean, that's been down in your soul. Um, tell us a little bit more about what, what happened after, uh, you know, you guys moved down to Texas. Okay, yes, sir. So when I moved to Texas, um, I was trying to find myself and, and just find what I was passionate about. So I would take this job and that job. And I think a lot of veterans experience that when you leave the military. It's hard to land on your feet and find something that you're really passionate about. And and that's what I was experiencing. So I so happened to see an ad about the Medical Sales College online. And I decided to just click on it and and, and, and see what it had to offer. So uh, I clicked on it and, and, you know, I read it and 
I noticed, you know, certain things about the money and about what you do. So I decided to just, you know, see what it was about. At least I could sit in on a call. And I decided to sit in on a call. And I was at the V. I, was, I think I told you this story. I was at the VA uh, listening to Mr. Jim because he gave a presentation on what the medical sales college would entail. And it, it just it just seemed like like it was a perfect fit. <laughs> That's that's fantastic. Well, I do want to say thank you for your service as well, um, for all of your dedication and that all that you've given to uh, our country and, and to each of us watching here today. And so as you watch that, you know, that or listen to, um, you know, that webinar with our CEO, Jim Rogers, um, tell us, you know, was there something that inspired you or was there an epiphany that you said, hey, I'm going to take this chance and, and enroll? Tell me, tell us about your decision and how you got to that point of saying yes to the Medical Sales College. Well, Mr. Jim has a way of just firing people up. <laughs> uh, you know, he's, he's very inspirational. Remind me, reminds me of some of my coaches growing up, you know, just got away with words. And, and I left that meeting feeling very inspired. Um, it was a, you know, medical sales was a challenge, something I had never heard of to that point, but I left that meeting feeling very inspired by him and his passion for the medical field and sales and growth and, and what you can do with your career and how far along you can come. So, you know, his passion kind of just, it kind of just permeated to me. And, and that's what I really took away from that meeting. Well, that, that's fantastic. Tell us about, you know, obviously the decision to come to MSC is a big one, right? Um, both in time and in financial resources, right? So sure. t talk to us a little bit about how you were able to, you, you know, justify that um, with, with yourself, with your family and, uh, and make that work. Well, I was at the county and, you know, what I didn't want to do is be in a position to where I was at a place where I wouldn't grow. And I think as a salesman, you have to const constantly grow and constantly develop. And that kind of suits my personality. So while I was at the county, you know, I view my situation as a researcher. You know, I was in-house. I was doing uh, brain research. But I, I didn't see myself expanding from that position. So, you know, the justification to take on the medical sales college courses were to challenge myself to not only grow and learn more mm -hmm. about what I know about the brain, but also about the aspects of the, of the orthopedic field and different aspects in the medical field. So um, I decided to enroll and uh, the justification was to grow and learn and develop myself. And I always looked at it as if, hey, if, if this doesn't work out, then I learned a lot about something that I had never even heard of before. First off, I want to say we had wonderful instructors, uh, Jessica Norton specifically. Uh, she was very savvy. I mean, you, she was so passionate about sales and finding solutions. And, and you could just see the fire in her eyes. And uh, people like Miss Liz Tendorf, she had a really great way of breaking things down um, to like almost dummy style. The professional development course with Mr. Scott Bender was amazing. Um, you know, he showed us how to not only manage our, our, our LinkedIn, but also how to, to look like a salesperson, to act like a salesperson, to talk like a salesperson, what to expect. When, when I got on campus, I was able to meet my fellow classmates and we all just kind of became like a family. Uh, we had a group text and, and we would push each other and help each other study for, you know, the tests. And, um, you know, we, uh, we, I remember, uh, before the, the final presentation, we all woke up and, and was giving each other our products, uh, our presentations just to make sure that we were spot on. So the whole experience felt like it felt family oriented. And then once that was finished, tell us about how you kind of found your, your, you know, the position that you're in now. Tell us who you're working for and what your role is and uh, how you secured that. So how I found Ravonics Biomedical, they came to the recruiter's page and my supervisor, his name is uh, Pierre Garcia. He's the VP of Ravonics Biomedical. 
he found me on the page. And, you know, we, we, we spoke about just the potential of me working with the company. And immediately after that, we did a few interviews and, and he decided to, to bring me on at Ravonna Spire Medical. And I'm grateful for him for that. He's also a graduate of medical sales college from many years ago. Wow. So, uh, you know, he, he understood it's a small world. <laughs> it, it goes back to that family atmosphere. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's fantastic. So tell us about, did you ever dream that, you know, when you were, you know, back in the day, cutting lawns, right. And, and hustling that business to, you know, that you'd be in a position where you are today, you know, in professional medical sales, um, Gosh, just, just did, did you have that vision at the time? Could you ever imagine where you'd be today? Absolutely not. Um, you know, like I said, I come from humble beginnings. I, I grew up in foster care. So, you know, and I was actually diagnosed with autism and ADD and ADHD. So in a lot of cases, you know, a lot of people kind of put on me that I would be in prison or in jail or dead. So to to come across or come in a situation where I'm a professional, where I get to be myself in my job, where I can create goals and manage those goals and maintain those goals and I'm making quota and I'm, I'm and I actually, you know, I'm a businessman. I have to carry myself as a businessman. I have to, you know, plan meetings and plan out times. It's all it's all breathtaking. <laughs> It, it, it's so hard to, you know, encompass and 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 and, and understand because I, I definitely did not expect to be here where I'm at. This has had a pretty big impact on your family as well, and, and in particular your brother, from what you've told me. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I think I left that out a little bit, but uh, I adopted my brother out of foster care while I was in school, which is a big reason on why I had to quit football. I had to um, provide. And, and be a father figure at the age of 22. And, um, you know, I, I just wanted to show him and other foster kids that you don't necessarily have to utilize your path or go along the path that they say foster kids will go. Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, only 2% of co uh, foster kids graduate college. So, you know, me, I'm, I'm, I was trying to instill in my brother that we can be a part of that 2% and maybe the 2% could turn into 3%. Um, and I accomplished my goal and he's currently enrolled at Alabama A&M uh, as, a, as a junior engineering major. So, you know, all this is done for, for to show foster you that, you know, we could be something outside of what we were supposedly destined for. That is just an amazing story. I am so moved by just your your tenacity and determination, Tracy. It, it really is, and and uh, the maturity that you've had, and the impact that you've had on your brother, uh, on your own family, and certainly others. You know, I, I've always said that the reason that I came to the medical sales college is because I think it makes a difference in the lives of individuals. It it really transforms uh, families, and and in 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 turn, we change communities, right? Because we it's yes, just that big of an ink uh, an impact and boy your story just illustrates that perfectly thank you thank you i think uh you know like you um you know i think there's a way to inspire others so you know just talking to you and talking to mr jim and talking to the professors you know the impact that you guys have had on me in in such a short time um you know i'm, I'm not a year removed from graduation and I've grown so much professionally and personally. So, like you said, just the impact of the medical sales college, the medical sales family, the, the classmates that I went to school with, seeing them in their medical sales careers, it's, it's very joyous to watch. And, 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 and I'm, <laughs> I'm interested to see, you know, what the outcome will be, you know, where, where we'll all be in, in five years. <laughs> That's amazing. What, what, so if somebody was uh, considering the medical sales college and, uh, and wanted your opinion and your, uh, your coaching, what would you say to them? I would say just trust your heart. You know, um, you know, a lot of people would look at ass online as challenging as, you know, is this real? Is this superficial? 
you know, a, a, a lot of places online kind of sell very superficial things that may or may not be true. But when I clicked on the page and I talked to Mr. Jim um, and listening to him, I, I had to trust my heart. And, 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 and in order for me to trust my heart, I had to, you know, just, just envision something greater for myself. And I'm so happy I trust in my heart. And that's what I would tell to anybody that wants to get into this field. You have to trust your heart. You have to be focused and you have to be hungry. And if you have a vision for yourself, if your vision is greater than anything that you've ever imagined, then you have to go after it <laughs> every day, every day, go after it. So that, that would be my advice. <laughs> Wow, Tracy, thank you so much for inspiring us. And, and we certainly are here to uh, support you as you grow in your career. And do not do not hesitate if we can help in any way as you, uh, as you move forward. Uh, that, that family continues and uh, we're here to support you as well as our, uh, our, our fellow graduates from the Medical Sales College. Thank you so much for sharing your story. It, uh, it takes a lot of courage to be you know, as open and as candid as what you've been. Um, your success is just in its infancy. It's, uh, it's in its beginning. We look forward to uh, having you back as you grow and mature in your career. Mr. John, uh, you, don't, you don't understand how, <laughs> how big of a help you've been to me and, and, and giving me gems and jewels uh, over the past few weeks of, of kind of getting to know each other. So thank you and thank Mr. Jim and Mr. Scott. You guys shared your vision with the world and I was just one of the few people who was affected by by you guys' vision. So you guys are doing a great job. You know, <laughs> hopefully I can <laughs> continue the, the relationship. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Tracy. And that blessing flows both ways, my friend. Um, we, we truly are thankful for you and uh, for, for touching us all. And um, we're here for you as we move forward as well. Thank you so much for, for being on today. I, we're, we're anxious to share your story and uh, we wish you the best of success as we move forward, my friend. Thanks for tuning in to Medical Sales Live. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel for the latest in all things medical sales.